Welcome dear doctors in an Acqui student zone with Dr. Sayeda Sara. Today I will uncover the secrets of pelvic fascia. So grab your books, try to understand this topic. And if you feel tired or boring while having this lecture, take break, have a cup of tea and resume. Have you ever thought what's the clinical significance of this topic and why we should cover its anatomy? Uh, it's because of course you have to take good grades in exams. Besides this, you will feel exciting when your concepts be clear. Believe me. Uh, let's start. Knowledge of pelvic fascia is important. Uh, it's important because whenever there are the fractures of two pelvis and you know what's the two pelvis is. And these fractures are mainly associated with the injuries of the soft pelvic tissue. Uh, and if this soft pelvic tissue is damaged, the thin pelvic veins are also damaged. And whenever uh, these veins are damaged, these are the major veins, which are internal iliac veins and their tributaries. So these veins are located in parietal pelvic fascia beneath the parietal peritoneum that we will see later on. When there is damage to these veins, uh, it leads to massive hemorrhage. And in these cases, it can be life-threatening situations. We have to handle these emergencies. Uh, in another case, if there is a vertical shear fracture, it can cause a damage to urogenital diaphragm. And in case of damage to urogenital diaphragm, the male urethra can be damaged. So uh, that is another complication. Uh, similarly, uh, in case of pelvic injuries, we have seen that the urinary bladder can also be affected, especially if it's full. Uh, reason for the bladder damage is its anatomical location that all of you know. Uh, it's anatomically located immediately behind the pubic bone in both sexes. Uh, remember, in most cases of pelvic injuries, uh, the rectum is protected. Uh, but if there are the sacral fractures, it can cause the thirst into a pelvic cavity and it leads to tearing of a rectum as well. Uh, in cases of sacral fracture, and the patient can also feel persistent pain. Uh, it's because of nerve injuries and in case of a nerve injuries uh, there are the fibrous tissue that is around the sacral spinal nerves it stretches and it results in persistent pain now i will move towards the main topic that is a pelvic fascia uh, so remember the pelvis is inferior most part of trunk and it is between abdomen and thigh as you can see in this uh, image as well so pelvic region includes the pelvic girdle and perineum both uh, here in this image, the pelvic girdle is shown, which is formed by two hip bones together with the sacrum and the coccyx, which also participates in the formation of a pelvic girdle. Uh, so what the fascia is? Fascia is actually a thin casing of a connective tissue that surrounds and holds every organ, blood vessels, bones, nerve fibers and the muscles in place. Uh, because we are talking about the pelvic fascia, so this fascia is also a connective tissue. But this connective tissue is located in pelvic region of uh, body. That's why it's named as pelvic fascia. And the function of this fascia is to support the various pelvic organs, uh, which includes bladder, uterus, rectum, and the pelvic floor muscles as well. Uh, this is a sagittal section of female pelvis. And anteriorly, you can see a white structure, which is pubic bone. Uh, immediately posterior to pubic bone, we can see bladder. Uh, between the bladder and the rectum, uh, we can see uterus. Uh, we can also see the pelvic floor muscles in this image as well. So the pelvic fascia hold all these structures, which are pelvic organ and the pelvic floor muscles, and it provides support to all these organs. Uh, there are two components of the pelvic fascia. First is parietal endopelvic fascia, and the second is visceral endopelvic fascia. Uh, mostly the term endopelvic fascia is used in books so this includes both the parietal and the visceral but uh, remember a few books have also used the term uh, endopelvic fascia just for parietal not for visceral they have used uh, now we will go into detail of these parietal and the visceral fascia what they are what are their modification what they are going to do in our body and where they are located now first i will tell you about parietal fascia Parietal fascia is of variable thickness. Its thickness is not same at all parts uh, where it's going to cover. And it's also important to remember that this fascia is a continuation of endoabdominal fascia. And endoabdominal fascia is a deep fascia that lines the abdominal wall. Uh, so uh, it's continuation of this fascia. So parietal pelvic fascia covers the lateral pelvic wall. It covers the pelvic floor as well. 
and it also covers the pelvic muscle. Uh, you can see yellow structure in this image uh, that is a connective tissue and we name this connective tissue as an parietal endopelvic fascia because it's located in the region of a pelvis uh, and it is covering the lateral pelvic wall as shown as green. It is covering the floor of pelvis and we will also cover the muscles of the pelvis as well. The specific part of the parietal pelvic fascia that cover the muscles th and they are named according to the muscle that they are going to cover. Uh, for example, obturator fascia, it is the fascia of obturator internus uh, muscle and it covers the pelvic surface of this muscle. Uh, similarly, there is also another fascia which is the fascia covering the piriformis. Uh, similarly, fascia covering the levator and eye uh, and the same pelvic floor muscle uh, which are over there. Besides covering the pelvic wall and the pelvic muscles, parietal pelvic fascia also covers the pelvic diaphragm. And the pelvic diaphragm is uh, just formed by means of a two muscles, which are levator and eye and the coccygeus. Uh, here, parietal pelvic fascia forms two layers, superior fascia of a pelvic diaphragm and the inferior fascia of pelvic diaphragm. So to make it more clear, focus on this image and trace the levator and eye as shown here. Although the coccygeus is uh, not shown because the pelvic diaphragm is formed by both levator and eye and coccygeus. Uh, so here we can see that the top and the bottom of the pelvic diaphragm, there is a facial uh, covering over there which is covering the superior and the inferior aspect of this pelvic diaphragm and they are named as superior fascia of pelvic diaphragm and the inferior fascia of pelvic diaphragm. Uh, there is another facial covering formed by the parietal pelvic fascia uh, that we name as presacral fascia. As the name indicates, pre, so it's anterior to sacrum bone. Uh, here the sagittal section of this is shown and when you identify sacrum bone in this image, look in front of sacrum and you can see there is a fascia lining the anterior surface of a sacrum. Uh, so where this fascia is going to terminate, it terminates at the level of anorectal junction and at this point this fascia fused with that of a fascia of rectum. Uh, now you have to remember another important point relating to this uh, that is uh, that the presacral fascia at the level of S2 to S4 level uh, from here another fascia originates from it and we name this fascia as an valdeus fascia or uh, rectosacral fascia. You can easily remember this uh, valdeus fascia with its other name that I have told you is rectosacral fascia. A rectum term is used because it fuses with the visceral fascia of rectum and the sacral shows its origin uh, as already told you it originates from the presacral fascia at the level of S2, S3 and S4 levels. So the valdeus fascia divides the retrorectal space into superior and the inferior compartment. If I sum, uh, summarize this fascia, remember this is very tough tissue that attaches the rectum to endopelvic fascia at the level of S4 and it is having great clinical significance as well in case of rectal cancers uh, because the adherence of this tissue is mostly seen over there so it can be involved in these cases as well. We have covered a lot about the parietal pelvic fascia and still lot to do. So take a deep breath and try to cover remaining part after break so that you can grab content. But I think so, no break for me. So I will start uh, from another modification of parietal pelvic fascia that is tendinous arc. Tendinous arc is a thickened band. It is a thickened band of connective tissue and this band of connective tissue is formed on either side of pelvis, not on a one side. And it plays a crucial role in supporting the pelvic organs, uh, especially in that of females. The function of this arc is to provide attachment to various pelvic floor muscle, uh, like uh, levator and eye muscle, which originates from this arc. Uh, and the anatomical extent of this arc is very important, so you should know from where to where it's going to extend. Uh, as you can see in this image, anteriorly uh, it originates from the posterior surface of uh, pubic symphysis and posteriorly it extends to ischial spine which are the bony prominence located on the uh, ischium. As this was attaching from the pubic symphysis uh, to the ischial spine, hence it forms the ligaments for the bladder, prostate, rectum and the vagina that you can see uh, in upcoming uh, this slide as well. So the anterior most part of this tendinous arc forms the puboprostatic ligament 
दैट इज फ्रॉम द प्यूबिस टू प्रोस्टेट इन मेल्स प्यूबो वेजाइकल लिगामेंट फ्रॉम अ प्यूबिक बोन टू ब्लैडर इन फीमेल्स सिमिलरली द पोस्टीरियन मोस्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस बैंड फॉर्म्स द सेक्रोजेनिटल लिगामेंट इन बोथ सक्सेस सो द सेक्रोजेनिटल लिगामेंट फंक्शन इज टू अटैच द सेक्रम एंड द साइड्स ऑफ द रेक्टम टू द प्रोस्टेट इन मेल एंड द वेजाइना इन फीमेल Uh, it also forms the uh, posterior its posterior most uh, part also forms the paracolpium in female and uh, what the paracolpia are the paracolpia suspend the vagina between the tendinous arc and they assist this organ uh, in place they also help in bearing the weight uh, of the fundus of the bladder as well uh, finally we have done with the parietal pelvic fascia but still uh, another fascia uh, that is the visceral pelvic fascia is left Uh, it's not much complicated like that of uh, parietal uh, so as the name indicates the visceral so this fascia covers the pelvic viscera like bladder prostate and the uterus uh, so here you can see this is a sagittal section of a female pelvis and we can see visceral pelvic fascia is covering the bladder as shown in blue uterus as shown in pink and the rectum you can see as in green color Uh, so remember the visceral pelvic fascia also covers the vessels and the nerves which supply these pelvic organs so besides forming the covering of the viscera it also forms the septa uh, between the retroperitoneal organs like uh, rectovaginal septum it forms that is between the rectum and the vagina it also forms the vesicovaginal septum that is between the bladder and the vagina so you can see in this image there are the gaps between the rectum uterus and the bladder but normally we can't see such type of a gaps uh, so there are the septa or the connective tissue fillings uh, which are filling these gap and they provide support to these organ so this is a sagittal section of a male pelvis and here the visceral pelvic fascia is forming a septa and that we named uh, as a rectovesical septum that is between the rectum and the bladder so remember the visceral pelvic fascia also forms a packing material in a area of a pelvis to support these organ in place you can understand this with a simple example suppose uh, if i place bottles in a box and if i want that these bo uh, bottles don't move and they should be kept in place and uh, whenever i am going to move this box i will keep the packing material between them similarly the highest level of perfection is done by nature so how this highest level of perfection is done we will look into this we know in our body the bladder is located posterior to pubic bone and the rectum is located anterior to sacrum bone and we know the bladder stretches when it is filled with urine and similarly there is also a stretching of a rectum as well when it uh, fills with feces so these organ need a space to accommodate when filled or stretch and the work nature have done here there is a packing material and it is a loose uh, this is a loose type of material because it have to accommodate these viscera in response to stretch as well so anatomically uh, we can see two spaces over there uh, one is retro pubic space and other is retro rectal space so retro mean posterior so retro pubic space is posterior to pubic and the retro rectal space uh, this space is posterior to rectum so retro rectal space is also known as pre sacral space that is anterior to sacrum so lastly i will tell you about another modification of a pelvic fascia that is a hypogastric sheath uh, so the hypogastric sheath is a thick band of condensed pelvic fascia and this hypogastric sheath separates the two potential spaces uh, that we have covered previously uh, these spaces were retro pubic and the retro rectal space suppose if i place hand in a retro pubic space and if i place my hand in a, re a retro rectal space then I, and i if i am going to move it it will continue into a hypogastric sheath so it provides a path or a passage to vessels and also to nerves which are passing from the lateral pelvic wall to these pelvic viscera uh, so another function of this hypogastric sheath is besides the vessels and the nerves it provides path for the uh, ureters and in males it also provides a path for the ductus deferens as well um, being a medical doctor remember there are the three lamina of this hypogastric sheath anterior one middle one and the posterior one uh, of course the anterior lamina will be related to bladder because uh, bladder is located anteriorly so the anterior most lamina of this hypogastric sheath it forms the ligament for bladder 
and the middle lamina forms the cardinal ligament or the transverse cervical ligament that is the main support for the uterus and the posterior most lamina of this hypogastric sheath is going to form the lateral rectal fascia that was all about the pelvic fascia before i end this topic i will ask question from you uh, my question is at what point the parietal and the visceral layer of the pelvic fascia become continuous yes i know you are a genius both the layers become continuous where the pelvic organ penetrate the pelvic floor as you can see in this image the rectum is penetrating the pelvic floor and the point where it is penetrating this pelvic floor the both layer the parietal and the visceral they become continuous with each other so the same will be other pelvic organ like uterus and the bladder as well finally we are done with it thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe like and comment if this content really helped you